G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and I'm going to say straight up if you have not seen yesterday's video you need to exit this video and go and watch that one first because it's a direct follow on. So here we are with the second installment of the Laguna Seca round and in the FIA Manufacturers series. We are of course in the Toyota 86 which is a very strong car for this combination. I would probably go so far as to say this is the strongest round for Toyota as a manufacturer. So we're looking to improve on our last result uh, out. 234 points if I recall correctly we got which I would normally settle with but I knew I could do better than 234 points. So. I've gone again, and that's something I would hardly ever do with the 220 plus point result, but let's go, out for qualifying, so we're going to be making sure we get our good qualifying run in, so coming out here, I do the most stupid thing I've ever done, something I've never ever done before, grazing the exit, grazing the outside of Rainy Curve, and that really has put me on the back foot for qualifying, I've got 1 minute and 40 seconds remaining, for the qualifying session. That is just about the length of a outlap. And we get overtaken by Chupagetti. That's probably not too bad, to be honest. We're going to get a strong slipstream. But we've got 10 seconds as we come out of the final corner. That is cutting it very fine. And it's probably going to be uh, very difficult for anyone behind me to get another lap in. But I think he just about does. That was too close for comfort. I don't know why I made that mistake. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done. And then just to add on the list of stupid things I do, I go too wide on the exit here and spin the car out. Bang into the barrier. That's qualifying done and dusted. I don't have enough time to complete this lap and start a new one. So that's that's qualifying done. I'm at the back, starting 20th. Trying to, trying to improve on a 234 point result. At the back of the pack is not where you want to be because improvement in uh, improvement in the point result is probably like first, second, third, and fourth in this lobby. So that's where I need to be. Not in twentieth. I've got a massive job ahead of me, and you know, it's really, really difficult. The Toyota 86. Okay, so it's a good car for this combination, and if you're sort of running up towards the front, you're fine. But the problem here is that stuck behind everyone you can so easily get stuck behind people in the corners and not be able to overtake them down the straight because of your power deficit so i think that's kind of what we found here we're going to fast forward through this race pretty quickly because it's really nothing to write home about two people bin it on the first lap we're up into 18th skip ahead to lap two we're looking up the inside of numu at this point we're getting held up you can see bang we run into the back of him trying to get onto the power i'm like mate you can get on the power earlier than that trust me so i'm getting held up and then we graze the gravel just a little bit frustrated at numu there not really his fault that uh, but i'm not focused Managed to graze the gravel on the entry to turn three and lose even further time. It gives me an opportunity to gap them a little bit so I can catch them back up. Setting my fastest lap of a 29-1. Not a bad fastest lap. At this stage, someone else has binned it on the exit of turn three of lap four. Up into 17th position at this point. Numu on the exit there gets not as good as me, so we're going to be into his slipstream. Looking up the inside of turn five. Does he manage to get it done? No, he manages to defend it actually, so we're still stuck in, in uh, 17th position at this point. I'm definitely getting held up and it's really frustrating. And coming into turn one, I'm like, bro, you can break later than that, as I nearly run into the back of him and have to take avoiding action. And look at this train of cars. What's that? One, two, three, four, five cars, all nose to tail here. I'm just getting held up so much. I'm just thinking, you, you knew I was supposed to be up the front. Oh, I guess it's not really their fault as Numu runs very wide. But if they just let me pass, they could stick into my slipstream and I could drag them to the next group of cars, which you can see there's quite a large gap. I'm trying to look up the inside. I want to get past these people as quick as possible. This race is going down the toilet, and I think it already has. There's no way I can gain 17 seconds in, in this race. So, down the corkscrew, trying to get past Numu still, trying to get down the inside, just get a nice smooth run there. And we, I thought I was going to clip the gravel, but I didn't. Managed to get through there nicely. Through turn 11, I catch right up to the back of Numu again. So I'm thinking, bro, you're holding me up again. Looking up the inside of the final corner. He just turns in while I'm there. And unfortunately, I kind of run him out of road. So I think that was just my frustration getting the better of me. Sorry, Numu. I, that's not really me. That's not who I am. I'm sorry. But I don't redress it, actually. I continue on with that, but... 
I think I, I think I felt as though he turned into me, so I was like, what are you doing that for? Plus, he's held me up, so I think I was just a little bit frustrated. It didn't give him as much room as perhaps he deserved, but at least I'm up further. But we'll see how this race goes. So I've now got SC from LA and Miho, uh, who, who has gone and overcooked it into the corkscrew. I've now got Miho around the outside. I'm trying to get the straighter run to get down uh, to get past SC from LA, but then uh, Hayate Lily takes that as an opportunity to go down the inside. So that's very unfortunate. He was just about close enough, or she, I'll say they. They were just about close enough to, to get that move done. I've now got dirty tyres, get a terrible final corner, and I've now got Miho back in my slipstream. So... I think you're beginning to see where this race is going, and I think you're beginning to see where the title of this video comes from. So this race is definitely not what I what I needed. I'm trying to improve on my 234 point result, but it's not going to happen in this one, is it? So at this point, I was kind of forced. I was relegated to the fact that I needed to go again. I never do four slots, but this race I did it. I make a mistake on the exit of turn two, and Miho takes as an opportunity to go up the inside and shoves me off the track. Side to side contact there, and I end up second best. And then March Carp goes. Uh, on the wrong side of me as I'm recovering there. Although I was on the racing line to be fair, so I guess that's no real worries. Skip ahead to the next lap and March is ahead of me now. I'm getting held up once again as I'm going to have to back off here. You can see, yep, I back off the throttle, so I've lost a bit of time there. And the exit here, I think March, no, he actually keeps it on the track. I thought he made a mistake, but he doesn't. So I'm just losing time up behind him into the slipstream of the corkscrew. He breaks a little bit early for my liking. I run into the back of him again. So once again, losing more time. Look at my lap 7 lap time, 132.8. I was setting 28s at the end of my previous races, so I could probably be setting low 28s and even late 27s in this uh, scenario, but unfortunately I'm held up behind slower drivers, trying to get a move done at the final corner. And the reason I'm held up is because I've got no straight line speed to overtake them at the end of the straights. I've got to do it in the corners, but they can easily hold me up because it is quite a difficult track to overtake. Coming into turn one, I plow into the side of March. I'm breaking so early. I nearly made the apex there. So I broke where I would break if I was on my own is my problem there. That was my fault. But I'm still stuck behind them. Like, this is just agony. This is the type of race where I want to quit. Like, quit the race. I mean, not quit racing. And on the exit here, we once again have to go under the brakes early to avoid going into the back of March. Quite unfortunate there. Into the back of him again. I'm losing so much time. It's not funny and then into the final corner again. Another opportunity at the bottom of this, at uh, the bottom of the straight, but everyone's got slipstream off each other. That gap just extends. Then into the braking zone now. I almost run there, and we, what, I mean, what was that? I came to a, almost a complete stop. I have to drop to first gear to get out of there, and I get a penalty. Like, bloody hell, mate. Like, like fellas, what are we doing? You just got no racecraft whatsoever. And it's just so frustrating to be stuck behind here when I could so easily be running up the front on the exit here. Numu is very slow on the exit here. I'm going to try and get a good run out of this corner and get a position at turn five. And he has got a poor run. I've got actually good mid-speed acceleration, I've kind of discovered now, just now. So I go up the inside, but he turns in so aggressively and there's contact at the apex. That's on him, I'm afraid. I was quite clearly going up the inside and he just turned into the apex as aggressively as possible so a bit of poor racecraft there but he has lost that position and much carp makes a mistake one wheel into the gravel on the exit of turn six and that move is done i'm now behind miho so i've managed to dispatch two two people out of this pack that now i'm stuck behind miho and unfortunately that means numu has now gotten back into my slipstream like like this is just if you don't know what pain is, just watch this video because I'm in, I was in agony when I was doing this. I was just, I was livid, I was angry with myself for ruining qualifying and it put me in this terrible position. 26 seconds off where I really should be running. I run into the back of him here and we both still make the apex. Like, I ran into the back of him and he made the apex. Like, if that isn't evidence of breaking early, I don't know what is. 
and then coming up into turn six, we actually get a very nice run. So we've got an opportunity here. We've got the little bit of a slipstream. We're going to go around to the outside. Let's see if he has the skill to run side by side with me through the corkscrew like I managed to do with Heidebon in the previous video. But he actually manages to keep the position, but he doesn't quite keep it as snug to the second apex of the corkscrew. And it gives me an opportunity here. He just breaks on the apex, and I'm not able to get on the power as I would like. So once again, losing more time. I switch to the inside, and he breaks so early. I almost come to a complete stop again, and I've punted him, and he still keeps on the track. He's braking early. Two, three flashes of the brake lights there. He's not obviously not got a braking point. Like It's so easy. It's the number three board, but I'm just getting held up so much, and you know it's just so painful. A 31.5 set on that 15. I'm pretty sure I set a 28.5 or something in my first race on that 15. But coming through these couple of corners into the middle sector looking at Miho once again. Trying to look and just put him off on here and he I actually get a bump from Numu. That's a straight up punt there. Uh, get a get punted by Numu and now he's right onto my tail here and into the slipstream of Miho. We still are coming into turn six. You can see how much time we gain on Miho and how much time we gain on Numu. Like it's quite clear I'm the fastest driver in this pack. I'm just stuck behind because I can't get past down the straights. So frustrating. Once again, right up to the back of Miho with the corkscrew, losing more time running into the back of him and then trying to get a nice move here. And then coming into here, I get another bump by Miho looking up the in... Uh, another bump by Numu, sorry, looking up the inside of Miho and that much carp is caught up to the back. Yellow flag is out. Coming into turn six and Numu goes for this move and like, what What was that? Like, that's just stupid driving. That's, that's the most stupid move I've ever seen. That's probably an exaggeration, but pretty terrible move. Like, what was that? Completely le levered me off the apex, and it was at that point I'd stop bothering. I was like, you know, bloody whatever. 28.7, fastest lap on the final lap. Like, my frustration was through the roof. I was furious with these guys. I was just like, fellas, you've just got no clue, have you? I'm just, I'm fuming doing this commentary. You can probably hear it. You know, it's it's a difficult situation to be in because I put myself there by ruining my own qualifying. But I just feel as though if you're in that situation, like, just let the faster guy through. You can grab their slipstream and it can pull you up to further positions. But they wanted to fight for 16th or whatever it was. Like, what a pointless, what a pointless race. A waste of time. And that gave me 80 points. The way this championship works, if you do multiple slots in the same round, it takes your you know, the most recent result. So it's kind of a risk whether you go again because you can lose a very good result trying to go m for more. And that's what happened to me. I had 234 I could have easily kept, but I went again and ended up with 80. So it was either go again and try and beat the 80 or not bother and keep, and, uh, and keep the 80, of course. I knew I needed to go again. I'm trying to get a top 10 for Toyota, which... I've, uh, which I'm managing to do at this stage, but I've got to make sure that I can get a couple of good results at the end so that I can beat, uh, so that I can keep in the top 10, which is where I want to be. But this was a much better qualifying run, actually. So this is slot four. This is very late at night again, which is not where I want to be. And I was, you know, I didn't really want to be doing this. So, you know, two slots is enough. Two slots is, you know, that's enough racing you want to do, especially at night. When you're tired, you know, it's takes a lot of concentration to be fast in this game and to not crash the car. So the fact that it's late at night, I'm fatigued, I'm angry, it's just, it's frustrating. This game is frustrating sometimes. But all I'm trying to do now is just not make my stupid mistakes. I know which mistakes I can make because I've done them all in qualifying. So I'm just going to make sure I meet every apex and meet every breaking point. It's a very easy track to make a mistake because you've got sand right up to the track edge. I mean, you have the curbs, but you can easily overstep them. But so far, it's been a fairly decent lap. Exiting the final corner, we get a nice exit there. We, of course, qualifying on the soft tyre. And then up towards the line. We'll see what this lap is. 26.2! That's my fastest qualifying lap of the night. So, that actually puts... That was our fastest lap. Red Path is back, but he's behind me this time. So, hopefully, we don't punt him off. Uh, you know, see, la see previous video for context on that. But we actually get put in fifth. So, finally, we're in the position I want to be in. I'm up the front. You know, I'm fighting for these highest positions. I'm going to try and do my best. 
here. Got to try and not make mistakes. So I'm a little bit concerned about Red Path behind because I don't know if he's a revenge type guy or, you know, whether he's forgiven me for ruining an earlier race. But hopefully we can just be eyes forward and just not really worry too much about positions behind and just try and keep focus on positions ahead. Right, let's go. We've just got to try and drive through this first lap not making a mistake. So hard tyres, they're harder to get up to temperature than soft tyres. So we're just going to be spending this first lap basically just trying to avoid making mistakes and just trying to get heat into the tyres. So uh, Hyper LS goes up the inside of Supra GT who grazes the gravel on the exit of turn six. We get that move done up in fourth. That's not bad. Hyper LS will drive away from me at the start. As discussed previously, those FF cars are going to be very strong at the start of the race. So I'm not too worried about that. His tyre wear will kick in and uh, his tyre wear will kick in and he should come back to me. So I'm not too worried about that. It was status quo for a long time. Have a look at the pace. Finally, I'm doing some decent pace at the start. 28.7 on lap three, which is the fastest lap at the time, hence it being highlighted in purple and then a 28.8 on lap 5. Finally setting some 28s in there at the start of the race instead of 31s and 32s and being punted off and, su and, and such. One and a half tenths up on the purple fastest lap uh, on that first sector split, so I definitely have the pace to be sort of front running here. So I'm trying to get past Hyper. So even though it's lap 6, he will have, you know, a, a, he will have more tyre wear than me. I've got my rear tyres doing the power, my front tyres doing the turning. The FF cars have their front tyres doing the turning and the front tyres doing the power. So, you know, in layman's terms, just in, in uh, simplified down, he should essentially, he's got like two times as much tyre wear on his front tyres than I do. So, he's got, um, he's got poor tyre wear. I've managed to make my way past. A little bit of a strong move, but I left him room and we just about managed to keep this position. I've just got to be careful of a re-overtake up into the corkscrew. He's got up my slipstream, but he doesn't have the tie wear to break as late as I can. So we managed to get through there nicely, dropping down the corkscrew, and he's out of the radar. Out of radar, out of worry. But <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to go with that. But now we're just going to focus on the two up ahead. I can't believe we're actually got eyes on the lead like this is finally where I needed to be I went through hell in that previous slot to get to this to get to this stage you know I was all I was going through that previous race just thinking I really should have just kept my 234 shouldn't I because this is just absolute agony but I can't believe it we're actually fighting for the victory now we're going to be looking at the time gap to the leader 2.1 seconds as we cross the line of lap 9 and then on the end of lap 9 it's 0 0.9 so the two up ahead are fighting quite a lot hyper has dropped out of my slipstream so i'm now actually in with a real chance of a race victory it's been a long time since i've gotten a race victory but let's see what happens here coming in towards turn five is there going to be some contact between them no but the uh, alfa romeo breaks very early i'm actually getting held up now i've gotten held up behind these two who are fighting for position hyper's back in my slipstream so it's a little bit of a precarious position i find myself in i'm trying to get past the, this uh, car up ahead but in being stuck behind him i'm now getting hyper back into the mix so He's going to have good straight line speed. He's probably going to go for an overtake down the straight if he has the opportunity. So I have to be careful. I have to make sure I don't lose a position to Hyper, but I've got to make sure I keep onto the back of, of Haru Kauru underscore one. Go very wide on the exit of turn 10. Not that great, which means I'm wide and slow for uh, turn 11 and then up towards the final corner. Hyper has got my slipstream firmly, three tenths behind, but can I get a good slipstream off the back of the Alfa Romeo? I get a bit of an oversteer moment on the exit of that final corner there, but I thankfully do have the slipstream of the Alfa Romeo. It should thank, it should hopefully reduce the slipstream effects to the Scirocco, but I know that Scirocco is slow in the handling, so I'm going to defend this position for my life, make sure I don't run too deep so he can't get a cutback, and we successfully do that now. So, Another Scirocco up in the lead. He's going to be suffering with tie wear too, which probably explains why we've managed to catch up to these pair. So I think the Scirocco is defending as much as possible, but because he hasn't got the grip, he's slowing them both up. Contact at turn five. Uh, contact at turn four, sorry. And I managed to just run into the back of, of the Scirocco now. And then he, they're both defensive. I return to the racing line and it just opens up. Beautiful.
that is what it felt like. Moses manoeuvre down the inside and there's a penalty behind. So now I've just got to make sure I don't make a mistake because he's going to serve that penalty, which means uh, he's going to drop off. So I just have to make sure I manage to successfully keep this first position. Although he is gaining into the corkscrew, but I didn't think he was close enough. But then he goes for this. Of course you would, mate. Of course you'd do that, wouldn't you? Like, you just can't settle for it. You're about to serve a penalty, and you're just ruining other people's races. And now I've got Hyper ahead of me. Like, I saw it at that point. If, when I was in first with the person behind with the two-second penalty, I saw it at that point. Like, surely that's race over, isn't it? Like, as long as no one makes mistakes, that's it. But no, I had to get punted, didn't I? So now I've got Hyper ahead of me. He's going to be able to defend this position down the straight easily with the straight line speed of that Volkswagen. I've got a Ferrari a 458 behind me. He's going to be good in the handling section. So this, this race isn't over. He's going to be looking down the inside and managed to just about break later than the Ferrari. Just stop it enough and just keep that position from the Ferrari. Uh, this Trocco in first place is going to serve the penalty. That should hopefully put him behind us three people here and have me back behind Hyper fighting for the victory again. So, I've now got to re-overtake Hyper with his poor tyre wear, so I've got to make sure I don't get stuck behind him too much and therefore be susceptible to a move from the Ferrari. Looking up the inside of turn 5, there's a bit of contact there, a very strong move. Strong move, yes, but I knew it needed to be done. He is only down into second, you know, it, it was a strong move, but... You know, I need, I need to be aggressive, otherwise I'm not winning. And, you know, when you're on the line for a victory, you've got to weigh up the risks and you've got to go, should I should I race all dainty and perfect like I normally do or should I push the rules to the limits and sort of, you know, overstep the mark slightly? I mean, it's not even overstep. It's just, you know, go more aggressive than I normally would. You, you kind of have to sometimes, you know, especially when a race win is on the line. Unfortunately, I'm now pushing too much and I make this stupid mistake on the exit of turn 11 and I just allow Hyper to come up the inside. He outbreaks himself slightly and puts himself right onto the apex when I want to turn in and it just means that this Blackie Tito guy, this Ferrari is able to re-overtake me. So that's my own fault. That I was pushing too hard to try and gap uh, Hyper and unfortunately that means I'm now down into third when I should really be first. I've also now got a BMW M4 car behind me seven gear machine he's going to be good in a straight line especially with slipstream so i've just got to make sure once again i find myself in this position again trying to attack a slower car and hopefully not get overtaken by people there's punts into turn five they're both very wide there i managed to get up the inside of the ferrari there's some weird lag there and the ferrari makes contact with both of us but i think i managed to keep this position at turn six as long as i don't sort of go too slow on the exit and get it and fall victim to a cutback and there's aggressive defending behind look down on the radar two cars sort of jostling for position behind me but they managed to sort of get stopped in their tracks by my car i run slightly deep into the corkscrew am i able to defend this position uh, around the outside of rainy curve i think the Ferrari has just about got the car there, he decides to give me a bit of contact and end up wide off the grass and down into fourth, man, so frustrating, I just see Hyper driving away in the distance, I know that he's got poor tyre wear in the Scirocco, there's no reason why I shouldn't be ahead of him, except for the fact that I made a couple of mistakes, but you know, in terms of how our cars are driving at this point, there's no reason why I shouldn't be ahead of Hyper, so it's very, very frustrating at this point as I'm find myself behind this trio that all want to fight, stuck behind the uh, BMW. Hyper loses two positions in one corner. Re he's really struggling with his tyre wear at this point, but because everyone's in a power car ahead of me, I've got nothing to enter on the straight. So, I'm just going to be trying to get as close as possible once again through this first sector and trying to get a move up into turn 5. I think that's the best place I can possibly get a move done. Look how much understeer Hyper has in the Scirocco, but he has the straight line power on the exit. He's going to stop it clean on the apex here. I managed to get the power down in a slight overlap coming up towards turn 4, but it's not going to come off. So, I'm just going to focus on getting a very good exit here, but unfortunately he's gapped me just enough. I've now got a Porsche Cayman behind. Not a bad car, although it's a little bit more like the Toyota. Better in the handling section than it is on the straight, so I don't have to be too concerned about a slipstream move by the Porsche, as long as I can sort of defend the position successfully. Hyper gets a very good turn 6 there, and there's a mistake behind, so that just kind of relieves the pressure behind. And we're finally coming out onto uh, coming out onto lap 17. 
a black Alfa Romeo 4C has emerged. Uh, Haru Kuru again. So he's, I think we've seen him in the previous video. He's going to be contending for my position. And this has really thrown a spanner in the works because I want to be, you know, on the back of Hyper. I don't want to be defending from someone else dropping back, which is what I'm trying to do at this point. I'm lap 17, so I'm not going to be sort of making you know, smart racing decisions at this stage. Like, I'm not going to be sort of thinking, oh, well, you're faster, you go ahead and I'll re-overtake you later. There's no there's no time for that. I've got less than two laps to go. I have to try and keep any positions I can get. And at this stage, it means I have to defend from Harukuru, which unfortunately puts a, kind of a full stop on the race victory. I definitely had the pace here to win this race, and I think that was the most frustrating thing i found. But I think at this stage, if I can get a podium... That should improve my point result too on the 2.34 I got in race number two. So, I think as long as I can get this podium, I think I'll call it a night. So, uh, let's see what we can do. Coming on to the final lap, I make a big mistake on the exit of Rainy Curve, but I'm, that Alfa Romeo is not in a position close enough to capitalise on that mistake. I'm a little bit wide on the exit of Turn 11 again. I run defensive into the final corner. I don't want that Alfa Romeo ahead of me, and I leave him room on that curb. I give him the curb on the exit there, so that's all... All well and good, and unfortunately that little bit of fighting has just put me out of the slipstream of Hyper. I find myself in fourth position with no slipstream on the final lap, with two cars right up my trumpet. I'm going to have to defend this position for my life. Alfa Romeo tries to hang it around the outside to no avail. He is not successful in getting that move done. So, that just relieves the pressure. I'm back ahead of the Porsche, and I'm... Uh, but, you know, behind Hyper. Hyper, once again, is suffering from his tyre wear. It's not over. If he can sort of, you know, scrub up his tyres just enough through this first sector, and you can see I'm actually almost back in the slipstream range. So I still definitely think this third position is possible. Provided I don't make any more mistakes, I get a very good turn five there. I catch up a lot of ground under braking and through the corner. I'm down to less than six tenths, and we've got a large handling final sector to come up through turn six. I'm a little bit wider than I'd like to be, and Hyper just has that straight line pace advantage once again. I do have the slipstream though, but six tenths, it's a big gap to gain. And you can see the pair for first and second are fighting and defending as much as they possibly can. Alternate lines being taken by the Ferrari and the BMW. Hyper is just about far ahead enough for me to not be able to get close to him. And I think at this point, it's going to be a fourth position because even if I can get into his slipstream on the exit of this corner, I don't have that straight line grunt in order to get ahead of that Scirocco. And on the exit of the final turn, it's going to be a fourth. So we'll just grab the slipstream up towards the line. And at the end of the day, it was actually the Ferrari that got the victory. He kind of came out of nowhere, to be fair to him. The Ferrari 458, driven by Blackie Tito. You know, fair play to him, to be fair. Um, he's come out of nowhere and just capitalised on the little, you know, uh, the, the carnage at the front of the pack. And he's brought himself home a victory. Like, good on him, okay? I think if I couldn't get the victory, I think the Ferrari should have got it. We get 239 points, so a marginal improvement on the amount of points that we risked by actually going again. And that's where I left it. I thought 239, you know, it's better than 234, which means technically going again was worth it. Although I don't know how worth it because the amount of effort I needed to put in to get those... Uh, to get that slight point improvement was hardly worth it. It was like five points or something. I went through the race from hell and I um, went through that last race just there, which wasn't as bad, but it was still annoying to be stuck behind uh, Scirocco's. For, all for five points, you know, I don't really think it was worth it. But I guess 239 points is not a bad showing at the end of the day and it does put me firmly in a position to be top 10 Toyota. So that's where I left it. And that's where I'm going to leave this combination all together. So two videos you got out of this one. Lucky you. And I very much enjoyed getting these to you. Well, that's going to round out this one today. Do hit the like button if you enjoyed. And do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, and constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today. And that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.